Hi there. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's your girl Cranqueque Carabo. Or it's animated for Jesus, depending really on what you're looking at. Open the door to let in some fresh air. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Uh, let's just get straight. Let's just get straight into this messy age, okay? I'm gonna blow my nose because that did not sound right. Uh, I apologize for my white cast sunscreen. It is what it is. These are the days of the end. And uh, the sun is going to scorch men with great heat one day. So we gotta use sunscreen, okay? Oopsie, I apologize. Except it's like, um, yeah, you know? When the tribulation is lambasting the planet, nobody's gonna care that Garabo was blowing her nose in front of everybody. You know what's really unfortunate? My creased shirt, alongside the fact that the only people watching my content are menacing, beastly, and unfortunately, disincentivized in their bones from turning to Jesus because they're super scared of whatever's gonna happen to them. Anyway, dig the hair, lens a little old. We dig it. Today we have succeeded to make it dig like TLC. Digging, digging. I don't know you. Okay, so my shirt is spectacular. Let's just move on. Things are dire, things are dingy, things are nasty. And it appears things are not going to improve from that particular vantage point. They like my white cast sunscreen. <sighs> They're just going to keep on flashing you. Flashing you like a bad man in a park that thinks that, like, it's romantic to do that or whatever. And then scares some jogging women and playing children. <sighs> Amen. Praise the Lord for coffee. Always a delight. Mm -hmm. Anyway, whatever, let's just get straight to the point, y'all. I am grateful to be alive. It's a wonderful time to be alive. Um, I am not scared of death, but I certainly am scared of that which is trying to kill me. But God says, don't be afraid. Don't be very afraid because you'll be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Um, but I just can't help but wonder why is everything not all right at present? Okay, listen. Okay. <sighs> this world has got many philosophies. We get it. It's got philosophies. From here to Timbuktu, it's out here making like Aristotle. It's okay. It's out here making like Descartes or um, give me another uh, philosopher. It's out here making like, um, who is this guy? Like how in the world am I not remembering him? Whatever that okay. Okay. It's philosophical. And philosophies, mm, so sad. They've just been decimating the human race. Mm, because humanity, Plato, I wanted to say Plato, found him. Yeah, they are always just theorizing away the like existence of God. It's like so stark. <clears throat> it is so clear. I can. Yesterday I spoke about the atom and I adore the atom because it looks like the orphan name angel and that was described first. Well, today we shall communicate about the normal distribution. Normal distribution. We love the normal distribution because our lecturers from Varsity loved it. <sighs> but he did not prosper to evangelize me. I guess that's because it would have been taboo for him to just keep talking about God in a lecture. I don't know what's going on in these like uneasy streets anymore. Whether or not Christians can keep on talking about their Jesus um, in, in these uneasy streets. Because everybody's just so uneasy with Christ. Look at what they've done to me and my YouTube. Oh, it's only because I spoke about Christ. Oh, And people are like, eh. Mm. To a point of giving me grief, even when grief is not to be given. Listen, y'all. Plato and Aristotle. Let's chat. Okay. Philosophers. Let's chat, Plato. Let's chat. Um, this is not going to end well for you. Plato. Aristotle. Descartes. It's not going to end well. It's not going to end well because nothing ever does for people who don't regard God. We understand the world adores them. We understand the world regards them. They're still reading their material all these gargantuan many years down the line. We understand that individuals are actually writing theories sometimes get proliferated more than is absolutely necessary given the devastated, eternally bound, in condemnation souls of men. Yeah, we get that that's like a whole thing, but... Those who have ears to hear will hear what the Spirit says to the churches, so I have no fear. Those who are sheep will be led out, so I have no fear. It is unfortunate, however, that I am communicating at present with my white cast sunscreen to individuals that don't quite like the gospel. Mm. And they've closed me behind some YouTube firewall. I'm not happy with that. But I don't have to be happy because I'm safe. Mm. 
I will eventually have eternal elation, so whatever hindrance to my peace at present really is very temporary. Let us discuss Descartes, Plato, and anything at all that is trying to humiliate Jesus. Mamela, we're not doing this. Mm. Yo, I am disquieted and feverishly unhappy with the status quo, but it does not matter. Because my emotions here are not what regulate or guide my footsteps. It is what is rational and reasonable. Indeed, Jesus Christ has this to say, you guys. Do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So therefore, whatever does quiet in my unfortunate heart ought to be ultimately translated to irrelevance. My emotions must not instruct how i speak to these individuals because my emotions are turbulent and i'm maturing beyond all that turbulence this year is not going to end well occult practitioners just like my white car sunscreen it's gonna give off like flashing vibes like tlc you like to creep into people's households but this is what's good like jesus we renew our minds concerning that activity so we don't carry on being scared even though we start out really shaky in the knees we start out our chair withering in our pantyhose and then we just get over it my emotions are unhappy but it doesn't matter that my emotions are unhappy because my mind is determined my mind is set my mind is out here doing a thing that the mind does when it has been renewed by jesus so I really don't care that my heart is bereft at present because my heart will catch up to the mind. The human heart, it is written in God's word, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So no, we don't run with the heart. We run with a renewed mind. We grab the scriptures. Ugh, that was me clearing my throat. Yes. And we demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and we hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. So Pontius Pilate, mm, we understand that you think you're in a position to <sighs> decree whatever happens to us. But just like Christ, here in last the deal. The day is going to arrive and Pontius chills in front of a judging Jesus. And it's like, oh, I thought I was the judge and the king, but it turns out it was you. The Bible makes it clear that neither, no creation, I shall say something else. The day is going to arrive when every tongue will confess and every knee totally bow to Jesus Christ. And every tongue will admit that Christ is Lord. Unfortunately, however... The grand majority of the human race is not quite going to get to that place before it's too late for them. Mm. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we admit that Christ is Lord way in advance. In other words, when we're still walking these streets, hopping up and down them like bunny rabbits and kangaroos, we admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. But there are people that, you know, philosophize about what's going on in these uneasy streets and in their philosophies do away with the reality of the hell-bound nature of their persons. Just by simply arguing and arguing and arguing, coming up with all different kinds of random doctrines of demons and destructive heresies. Until they die and then it's like, shh, have you heard the end of a matchstick burning out? It's like, shh. Or oh, the frying of an egg. It's like, shh. Yeah, that's what happens when these people pass away. However, just like Descartes, Plato, and Aristotle, man, how they philosophized about what's happening over here. According to Jesus Christ, these are called vain philosophies. Because mm -hmm. he's the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. But like, they don't quite get that and neither do they care, so... I'm here to try and inspire care for the reality of the fact that it doesn't matter that you're an excellent philosopher and don't believe in my particular vantage point. Bottom line is, hell is real and so is heaven and you're not going there if you don't love Jesus the way, the truth and the life. It's uneasy to embrace in one stride, we get it, because the world hates disciples, also Jesus, were born dead in trespasses and sins, and since that our parents conceive us, we can do no good, no not one, for we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and our bodies are deceitful and ugly and fleshy and heavy and even our most righteous works are like filthy rags that's just the nature of the human being totally depraved you can't do nothing good you can't even draw yourself to jesus unless the father takes you over there you can't choose him so it's a dire strait we are all born in naturally automatically organically we are just like yeah to christ mm. 
So I have mercy and compassion on such a disease as that, given that I once had it. But I was cured, hallelujah, and Christ snatched me from the flames. And now I'm doing everything in my uneasy power to snatch the little tiny diabolical audience that is watching me right now. We understand that my YouTube channel is all silenced and shut up. And we get that these days they're even trying to come for my thumbnails. What's next? Very well. We get it. The bottom line is this. Hell is real and so is heaven, O oh, Aristotle. It doesn't matter how much you can come up with these vain philosophies that people will read pages upon pages upon wads of a textbook you've written. Because you said so. You don't get to say so and be right in the presence of a holy God that said you're wrong. Mm. So therefore, Descartes, Aristotle, whomever you want to be Plato, allow me to just put this out there. Coffee is a wonderful gift from God, so let's celebrate the sip first before we continue to converse. <sighs> now that we have sipped the coffee, let's carry on speaking. Jesus is Lord. Let's put that out there. Now that it's out there, I'm trying to convince you why that's a thing. Five or twenty or maybe seven little audience of diabolical menacing kingdom of darkness conglomerates. Listen, you're going to hell. It's a thing. And no amount of philosophizing is going to help that cause along. What's gonna be good is that you actually flip. According to the scriptures, we all are gonna rejoice eventually. And whoever is in heaven right now will start a party immediately if you turn over to Christ. But you don't gotta do it. You got a choice, but I mean, at the end of the day, who chooses to land in an eternal frying pan? Who? Only the deceived who think that their little philosophies are gonna get them somewhere tomorrow. No. They're not gonna get you anywhere tomorrow, neither the next day, nor perhaps two weeks down the line. Bottom line is, hell is real. And you're going there if you don't embrace Christ. No matter how much you might persecute the messenger attempt to end their lives, perpetually invest in death curses, stabbing, mirrors, and burning candles, I will still be right. And you will still be going there. Hmm. So let's just get this like situation eradicated already. My oh my. How scalpy and how itchy I might be. By the time I'm done this, here with this conversation, perhaps I won't be so itchy. Because then I will have reached people for Christ, and that then will bear for me moisturization tactics. Yes. I need to moisturize. It doesn't matter though. Because the day is going to arrive when there will be no moisture where you're at. You know how the rich man was out here, frazzled in his burning body, asking Lazarus to drop some moisture on his tongue. And Abraham told him, sorry, can't happen. Because there is a gulf separating you and I, us and you. And nobody can turn over to that space. So nobody out here going to be dropping any liquid or moisture on your tongue. You're just going to have to take it in your stride because you're burning forever now. Hmm. It's all very painful to take in one's stride. We work very hard to get people to not go there. You know what I mean? Because it's just not okay. It's not comfortable. That place was not made for you, human beings. Naive Plato, you. It was made for Satan and his angels. So everybody that's actually just kind of hopping into that space like an Olympic diver. Why? Huh? Uh. Let us discuss the normal distribution. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, allegedly, I am on a deathbed. Hmm. Didn't quite see that one coming. Or maybe I did. But Paul did say that we are killed all day long, persecuted, but not perplexed. Something of that nature. So... Here it is that Carabo, the homicided human being, is just still out here talking because Lazarus came forth. Hallelujah. Plato, apparently I'm dying. Even though there's no sickness in my bones, I don't have a heart condition, neither a, blur a brain aneurysm or a cancer, but I am in hospice. Hmm. I am in hospice. Apparently, allegedly, I am in hospice. Oh, just all very disquieting that. I keep on getting lambasted by all these 12 people watching my YouTube content with spells. They keep on cursing me to die, to pass away. But it's written in God's word that even if that were to happen, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Listen, guys. Be it death or life that I will experience, bottom line is I will never really truly taste death or neither will it have a sting on me. Because I already have eternal life, I'm kind of immortal. Transitory phase will be that flatlining activity that others do, that coding, cadavering, <sighs> soiling, sanding, crematoriuming vibe. Mm. It's only going to take me over to an eternal space where I can't die again, so death, where is your sting? 
Let me not to the marriage of true minds. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Amen. So herein lies all y'all's love for me altering. Because you found alteration in the fact that your hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Oh, you like me, you have a crush, you think I'm pretty. But now you want me to die? Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds. That sonnet was right. It was 100% correct. You claim to want to kill me because you love me and you can't have me be anywhere else, oh possessive souls. Over a person you don't even know because I mean really you literally found my content on YouTube and then decided that I gotta die. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds. You liked my content, subscribed and then you are killing me? Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds. Let me not to the marriage of true minds, true story, but like death, where is your sting? Anymore, you do not have it. Be ashamed of yourself, oh deadly virus of a deadly nature extra. Bottom line is, even if I die, I live. Why? Because to live is Christ, but to die is gain. But like you all are philosophizing that that's not true. How are you going to be like such a shifting shadow and change your minds about my existence? Apparently, allegedly. Oh, I gotta die because I don't want to love a nasty. Ooh. You're going to keep lambasting me. Met your sword, Santing. Insisting that I perish. And even if it does achieve such a success as that, I'm still going to heaven and you're still going to hell. Why is that even a thing? Then again, like I said, Aristotle, you are philosophizing that there is no hell. Oh, look at you, denying the reality of hell. Oh, you're in danger. Danger of Adam goes, he'd be afraid, to be very afraid. But you don't want to fear God who is going to send me to heaven, but then can cast your soul and your body into hell. But you want me to be scared of you and shake in my pantyhose because you can do a death spell. Oh. <laughs> Unacceptable and entirely inappropriate, but you're doing it anyway. My attempt over here is to achieve success in snatching your soul from the flames of hell because it looks like the only audience I have here are menacing mongrels in the kingdom of darkness. They can pull strings, they have money, so they paid YouTube to be menacing also. Mm. <sighs> this doesn't get old, but you do. Listen, and okay. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds. But it doesn't matter that my marriage of true minds is not true, but false. You don't believe in hell when the invisible qualities of God are all over creation. Yesterday I spoke about the wonderful, fascinating atom. And now today we shall speak about the wonderful, fascinating normal distribution. Indeed. When I was in university, once upon a time, even though people are in denial that I was once upon a time there, I studied. Hmm. I had a wonderful lecturer. Mathematics, computational mathematics. God bless his soul. God bless his soul. A Christian lecturer at Wits University took us for comp maths. His name was Kevin. I shall not give the surname lest you should afflict him with death spells too. Because you keep coming at the body of Christ. At the time of encountering lecturer Kevin, I was unregenerate myself. But I was one of those, you know, God exists to we people, but without really truly getting over, getting converted to Jesus. I wasn't truly saved. I wasn't saved at all. I was just one of those, you know, say the Our Father every night before you sleep and pray over your dinner and you're good. Mm. I didn't hate God. Well, actually I did because we're all born hating him, but I did not have a, a hate, like, you know, one of those hostilities that the world wear whenever you mention Christianity and Jesus, they, they try to burn you alive at the stake like you're a witch or necklace you like it's a birthday South Africa. Yeah, I wasn't that. Mm. Uh -oh. I like decorum, but I mean, that literally is okay because I'm dying apparently. So really in a hospice, who cares if I fart or burp in front of nurses because you think you're my nurses. Mm. Kevin, our lecturer, wonderful, wonderful man. Mm. Was a Christian and every so often he slipped into the DMs of students, the gospel in very subtle ways, but you know, I eventually figured it out for what it was. He was a saint. Alrighty, so herein lies my Christian lecturer teaching us mathematics. That's why those of you who are in fields of science, mathematics, empirical study are without excuse because if people who are mathy can agree that Christ exists, why are you disagreeing being all mathy and stuff? Anyway, he said when he was teaching us about the normal distribution that it's evidence of Jesus Christ. I was like, oh, really? 
He didn't, of course, use the name Jesus Christ because that could get him fired. He just said God very ubiquitously and generally because, you know, there were Muslims and Hindus and atheists in the room. When he was busy teaching us about the normal distribution, he was like, it obviously evidences that God is totally around. I was like, pray tell. I want to know why you say that. And he went on right ahead to expand on why he said that. Mm. So it is written in God's word that the Lord hates unequal scales, that he is just, that he cannot stand that which is crooked, and so he will straighten it. It is written in God's word that he resents, loathes, absolutely abhors the condemnation of the righteous and the acquittal of the wicked, yet another subset of his attribute of justice. So when things are kind of out of whack, we're like, oh, because God says, ah, oh, we are made in the image of God. All right. Mm. He breathed into man and he became a living soul. And upon creating everything, he was like, oh, look at that. It's gorgeous. He called it good. Mm. So if made in his image, he called us good. And if the earth upon gazing at it, he then said, wonderful. It then necessarily says that the earth must be resonating or reverberating his sentiments just generally. Okay, it's all about that Christ business. It's like, yes, God, uh -huh, every day, all day. That's creation. Even when it has fallen apart, it's still praising God to a point, to a point where today, now that it's fallen, it's groaning. Hmm, very well. So if creation agrees with God like totally all the time, it necessarily must also imply that creation also is disquieted with unequal scales. Creation is unhappy when things are crooked and skew. Creation loathes it when the righteous are condemned and the acquittal of the wicked is like a total thing. Creation cannot stand crookedness, even though we are happy with it as the human race dire straits those dire mm. but anyway plato let's talk here lies the circumstance so it's clear that creation is disquieted in the worst way by inequality the lord hallelujah amen and forevermore shall we praise his amazing awesomeness okay mm. made it such that everything all around is a witness to his name is a witness to his glory and is a witness to his fame even if there are rebellious, recalcitrant randos out here making like the ancient civilization in the movie Apocalypto, killing people, worshipping the moon, ululating to it, rolling down their decapitated, decapitated heads down a steep staircase, and then thinking that like that's okay. When your civilization is that uncivilized, even though you want to call yourself a civilization, you are an anomaly, you are an outlier, you are strange, you are bereft of equality, and therefore are an abomination to God. Mm. But God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of him. So the Lord sort of kind of forbears all that insanity until further notice. Amen. It is why. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, this is lovely. He insists, O oh humanity, giving you instructions, training you through the scriptures that you might be full, complete, lacking in nothing. He says, do a better thing and make yourself a workman approved by me. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems, right? In 2 Timothy 2, the Lord implores the planet to be workmen approved by God. In other words, clean yourself, O oh dirty one. Cleanse your garments, O oh filthy individual. Do better that I might use you honorably. But people every so often choose not to hearken to their consciences and the law of God written on their hearts, so they become vessels of dishonor. Well, vessels of dishonor, allow me to communicate this to you. Be you a vessel of dishonor or not, bottom line is you are all part and parcel of God's grand, amazing plan. You can either choose to be a vessel of honor, good disciple, patting on the back on the bed with God being like, at a girl, at a boy, or you can just choose not to do a right thing. But if you choose not to do a right thing, oh, Jacob, I have loved, yet Esau, I have hated. The Lord has set apart everything for its purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. So you are purposeful, which is why I continue to come here and speak to a conglomerate of nasty little occult practitioners that keep on cursing me to death. But I'm not dying, am I? Mm. I'm not perishing. And the reason I'm not perishing is because I'm a workman approved by God and all my words can't be resisted because God has given me them to speak and not a hair on my head will perish even though the day has arrived when all you who kill me think you're doing a service to God. Mm. Listen up, O oh souls of the planet. Okay. When you make yourself a vessel of dishonor, do not then gaze upon your indiscretion 
and imagine that you've been left i spoke about that yesterday so i will not unpack it that much but bottom line is nothing is out of the will of god the lord is not chilling in the sky wincing oh i didn't plan for that when stuff goes awry against his body when his christians endure a severity of hardship god is not like it's not like oh i wish you'd not done that i wish you wouldn't do that no that's not god he is sovereign so if you are being left to sprawl your body in the streets flattening yourself on the floor like peanut butter on bread in wickedness if you're being left in that state you are a workman disapproved by god a civilian instead of a soldier however one that's very very nuisensical and in your menacing disposition will ultimately be thrown in the lake of fire where the worm dieth not but not first before being used like G judas to betray the son of man so ultimately christ can propitiate for the earth okay you're a vessel of dishonor with a grand and important purpose but more as a vessel of dishonor than of honor a vessel of dishonor is like a toilet bowl people defecate and urinate in there it is still very purposeful and useful for the human race but it receives stools whereas a vessel of honor is like a chalice in the queen's or king's palace hey we drink wine out of it beautiful yes that's a vessel of honor like a fruit bowl vessel of honor it's hosting fruit so when you choose to be a toilet bowl sirue or whatever honey you cannot then on that day anticipate that you are successful in your filthy endeavors you are just being used for however long the lord will use you following which you will then just like with all vessels of dishonor then be thrown into gehenna the lake of fire where the worm dieth not and in that place there was weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity and the smoke of your torment rises up forever O plato you and your vain philosophies doctrines of demons and destructive heresies will ultimately perish and your lingering life force the breath you keep on inhaling and exhaling the heart that continues to beat at the peril of the church frankly is purposeful that's what i'm getting at so when you've made yourself a purposeful menace like a buzzing bee in the room as you're about to sting some people do not think that just because you've been left in that state that you must be succeeding plato oh philosopher no you're being used and i'm trying to snatch you out from being vessels of dishonor because it's not going to end well for you Esau. okay because god was loved and you're hated mm. let, us let us correct the status quo going on right ahead to continue to speak about my lecturer at university and creation that agrees with him seeing as we are made in the image of god it must necessarily be understood that we too then have got that which recalibrates us on the inside it's written in god's word that his law is written on our hearts so even before we are given the commandments frankly we were condemned already but he passed the law down that we might understand that we're condemned already and that we can't do anything to save ourselves christ is the propitiation hallelujah this law written on our hearts produces this juice in the brain when you act a fool called a conscience and this juice is bitter do you understand most people don't like to take it in their stride they try to squelch it and so therefore end up smeared or sneered or smothered in that conscience they sear their own consciences so you don't feel anything almost like anesthetic on your skin you are about to be cut and cut and cut and cut and cut by a doctor during surgery but you don't feel a thing when you put on your body oh, spiritual anesthetic danger of and gozi okay you gotta feel it it's uncomfortable like no man's business but you gotta feel it okay you gotta feel what it is that you need to feel in order that you might realize that i am not okay i'm not safe so when you insist on burying and sitting on burying and sitting on burying and sitting on like on trifle have you ever made a trifle uh, uh. yeah i'm gonna burp let me do that have you ever made a trifle you know how you keep on like squeezing it and squeezing it and then you add a layer and then squeeze and squeeze and then you add a layer and squeeze and until it's like this beautiful dessert but instead of it being a beautiful dessert it is a beautifully seared conscience mm. when you insist that you're gonna rub away erase the thing that makes you feel some kind of way when you do strange stuff yeah no it's not gonna end well okay it's not gonna end well you become more of an exquisite vessel of dishonor than you already are and this time around you just do things burning down buildings without feeling a thing don't pride yourselves in not feeling anything humanity you've seared your conscience on that day you're in danger because the internal siren or alarm that lets you know that you're going to hell and god is not happy with you that recalibrating justice scale inside your heart when then it is kind of eroded 
like tires after five years of driving on them without changing them when your tire tracks in your heart are eroded mm, 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 mm. yo you're five seconds away from going to hell thinking you're cool oh philosopher plato and aristotle cease and desist hostilities against the body of christ and against your own soul like stop it's not gonna end well at all hmm but there are indifferences in these streets that i'm trying to resuscitate out from that state we understand apathy is temporarily healing on the present planet but it is eternally condemning because once you have acted aloof long enough your aloofness will finally catch up with how you truly feel and you will be unable to sense when you're in danger we need pain receptors on our body so that when we get cut we can appropriately extract our bodies from the place that is cutting us so that when we put our uneasy unfortunate hands on a stove we can be like ouch hop up and down on the spot flee to the kitchen sink pour water on our palms grab ice out from the refrigerator and get relief that is a response to save us as human beings from basically killing ourselves by mistake the lord gives us pain so we can flee from it when we feel it do you understand the lord gives us consciences so we can flee from sin when we feel that it is killing us you would not just stand on top of a burning inferno without hopping up and down screaming trying to run and find a place to be extinguished you would not do that and yet you do it in a spiritual sense it's all very disquieting I do not understand why it continues to happen, but it continues to happen anyway. Mm. So similarly too, to pain receptors in your body you, that disquiet you when you are near a burning bush, when you are near a hot stove, when you are near a poisonous spider, when you are impended by a moving vehicle. The thing that makes you move out the way is the avoidance of further pain or pain at all you do not just hop into a bathtub scorching with boiling water you test the temperature if it's too hot you pour cold water and then only you skip in there mm. and yet here it is that you're boiling yourself in flaming water spiritually what are you doing all that which god has created as pain receptors in our bodies is to enable us to be aware of the finality of our lives the finiteness of our lives and how it is that we have got to guard them okay guard your hearts for from them flows the issues of life your body is a temple of the holy spirit take care of it stop putting puncture holes in it unnecessarily because you're into random extreme body modification it's not right it's not right and most of us largely if we are not masochistic tend to flee from impending pain or existing pain when it's in the room we get out and yet here it is that the pain of a conscience is just slathering you into searing the pain of guilt the pain of a conscience the pain of uneasiness because you done broke a person heart heaven what is with the feet what uh, what is with the feet hmm the endeavors, the wild and ominous ones at that, of keeping it there burning and burning and burning because you think you're going to be okay. Since when was anybody sitting in an inferno ever ended okay? Since when? Since when was a person standing in front of like a hail of bullets ever survived those bullets piercing their bodies? Like if you see danger, why do you not flee? Y'all, when you sear your conscience, you deliberately ignore your flight or fight response. You deliberately ignore your adrenaline response you deliberately ignore that which is the saving intervention that god put in our bodies to essentially not die when we are in harm's way we flee we run we are scared of impending danger because we know we are finite we are not adam and eve before the fall who can just keep living and living and living and living and have no sense of danger because they were never supposed to die and here it is now that they ate the fruit and they are dying we are scared of shocks of stimuli coming from outside that are threatening to our very existence it's why we jump scared when there is a rodent in the room even though it's an irrational fear even though it is highly unlikely going to end your life that response and hopping because of a rodent in the room is due to you feeling like your life is in some kind of danger because of the presence of that rodent we are scared of snakes spiders fast moving vehicles for that reason 
We are scared of hot water for that reason. We are scared of people walking around looking some kind of way like they're gangsters approaching us in an alleyway that is squeezy tight. We have got heartbeats that pulsate and pulsate and pulsate because there is a sense of knowing that danger is life ending if not fled from. Danger is life ending if not fled from. And yet your conscience, which is really no different from your pain receptors when you are out here boiling an egg and you mistakenly land your finger in the hot water the thing that makes you extract your hand so all that you have is a boil scar a burn wound but not so much a fatal circumstance in your hands yeah the thing that makes you extract yourself from finishing death off when it starts is response to adrenaline okay is we are we are finite humanity get that before the second coming of christ before the rapture before eternity we are finite we can die i mean i'm not speaking any new stuff am i I am not vocalizing any brand spanking new like you know pieces of information this is news you know but strangely all this defeatism on the part of the human race i don't get it but you know we don't got to get it because i mean at the end of the day uh, we were also foolish at some point were we not yes leave me be to burp hmm. at some point we also were defeatists i mean it took me 26 years to finally get my hand off the hot stove i got born again at 26 and a half and it is still a shock and a horror to me that for 26 and a half years i was literally dying and i did nothing about it i perpetually keep saying i wish i was saved much younger than what age that i finally did get saved the bottom line is the lord had mercy on me because he's slow to anger abounding in steadfast love not willing that anybody should perish but that also come to knowledge of him so he was forbearing for 26 and a half years until i finally realized that i'm sitting on an inferno and i'm not moving i'm sitting on a burning 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 stove and i'm not barging for 26 and a half years there are others who chill in that state for 40 years 50 maybe even 90 here it is that you've got a granny having lived all of her life ignoring god and then miraculously on her deathbed she repents but then others just kind of stay on that stove they just stay there and then they die what in the world we have pain in our body let us know to stop doing the thing that is painful because it literally can end in death when you cut yourself on the kitchen counter, you stop, you bandage yourself. You don't just keep cutting, do you? And here it is, that human beings are ignoring their consciences, aren't they? Mm. Your consciences are literally no different from pain receptors. You are going out of your way to ignore your adrenaline rush. Fight or flee. Either fight the flesh or flee temptation. One of the two. You gotta respond appropriately to danger fight or flee but flee or flight you must and yet here it is, here it is that we're dealing with people literally encircled by an impending wildfire and they're just standing there they're not trying to either snuff the fire out or run so far away that the fire can't consume them they're just taking it the christian walk is a combination of fight or flight the bible says that if they persecute you in one town flee to the next but the scriptures also say that we war not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places that we trample serpents and scorpions underfoot and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means harm us because God has given us authority. So we either fight, if at all the fight is fightable, or we flee, but we don't just stay there. We don't just stick around in a dangerous situation and not wield a sword for crying out loud. At least wield a sword. But if you feel like you are too beleaguered and the people fighting you are too many, like Neo in the Matrix, run run flee from sexual immorality but when a woman is seducing you out here licking your face in the office cornering you that's when you gotta push her away that's a fight that's a fight fight or flight but don't nobody want to do nothing in nature don't nobody and then i don't know what to do anymore all i can do is rock up here and speak and speak and have people come to a strange ravenous little conclusion that i am sexless i am unhinged as a result of being celibate for like a million years and so what i need to do to reprieve myself from the sorrow of my soul is basically go back to the vomit after having vomited or the mire after having been washed and those people that are insisting that i either go back to the mire or die they don't even realize that i have appropriately responded that's what's good hmm to adrenaline in my body i fled <laughs> i fled hey i fought didn't do anything for me because I was beleaguered, then I fled. And then I realized that, oh, snappity-doop, they found me where I was fleeing, so I came back to fight again. 
you know how I started an animated channel trying to run away from my accosters, my castigators, my afflictors, my abusers, my sexual harassers. I came back to talk to these menacing males. Mm. Because they found me where I fled, but all that activity of flighting and fighting. Mm. Yeah, no, uh, it's the godly response. It's what we ought to do. I did the right thing. And you are trying to make me sit around in front of an impending inferno, a wildfire, a forest. I'm in the center of some kind of an Amazonian jungle and it's burning and I'm just standing there. What am I expecting? To like disappear when the flames get to me? No. As best as possible, I'm gonna run away. But it appears as if though you keep on burning new patches of this jungle, hoping that I'll get engulfed by the flames. Bottom line is this. I'm gonna die fighting or I'm gonna die flighting. But I'm not gonna die standing because it's inappropriate to not respond to your adrenaline rush. God gave us. God gave us an endocrine system for no other reason but that. As soon as Adam and Eve fell, he was like, I'm going to invest an endocrine system in my people so that they will know to run away from swords, hailing at them, or at least shield themselves. Hmm, but not today. Not today. Your consciences are pain receptors. They suck, right? <laughs> I mean, I would know. It, it really bites to feel really bad. <laughs> to feel really bad about what you did to a person, it sucks. Man, it sucks. Mm -mm -mm. Guilt is a monstrosity. Hey, guilt sucks, okay? But like, if you do not appropriately respond to that sucky feeling, you are the one, you are like one who is standing in a bush where trees are burning and you are not running. You are not running. If you do not realize that, okay, I feel like trash, let me stop. Let me rescind hostilities. Let me seize hostilities against that which is making me feel like trash all the day long. When you don't stop, burn, brother, burn, burn, sister, burn. I think that we shouldn't let you burn Cause we are Shanya God has given you a conscience To feel some kind of way When you break the hearts of some people When you hurt the church It let you burn, let you burn Gotta let you burn Because uh, you don't want to be snuffed out You don't want an asbestos suit You don't want to make like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Have a fourth man in the fire Lest you shouldn't be able to flee from this fire You don't want to embrace the olive branch Given you by God through your pain receptors That are telling you you are in danger Humanity I don't get it Somebody, somebody please Somebody give me explanation Somebody, somebody defibrillate me Because I am flatlining from a lack of understanding As to what's going on with Aristotle over here your vain philosophies are not going to do anything for you. They will trash your soul for all of eternity. And in the run-up to you perishing, you will have had a very, very steep gut feeling that this is not going to end well. But you know, Aristotle, Plato, you that dude? Philosophize, girl. Philosophize, dude. Keep on coming up with mysteries. Keep on thinking that you can elude God. It's written in God's word that no one can deliver from the hand of God. You are given a conscience, human beings, and it operates very similarly to your endocrine system. You are given a conscience, human beings, it operates very similarly to your pain receptors. They warn you that your body is finite, that you can't die. And so if you don't stop this thing that's paining you, it's gonna spread like a gangrene, metastasize like a cancer, and engulf you whole. It's a parasite that if you don't nip it in the bud, if you don't amputate it, it is going to consume you as a host and finish you off. It's like a virus, okay? It does not die until the host is gone. Only then does it cease to exist. The best way to kill a parasite is to cut it off. Cut it off. Remove the tumor. But if you don't, you're just... If you don't, you're just a host. And sin is parasitic. Our fallenness is parasitic. It is that sting that you endure in the bush when you are traveling, when you are hiking. And initially it just looks like a mosquito bite until you wake up the next morning and you realize that you are black all around that wound. You've been bitten by a poisonous spider and unless you find an anecdote, you're dead. Unless you find an antidote, sorry, not anecdote, an antidote, you are dead. Sin is a slow spreading cancer or poison in the body and the Lord always gives you some red little dot of a spider bite at first to warn you and then he metastasizes it is, is it he metastasizes it and then it looks like a black bruise and if at the stage of seeing a black bruise you're still not out you're trying to go to the emergency room what are you doing what are you doing 
we can understand your ignorance when you're dealing with just a, a mosquito bite looking type bite but when it's all black what are you doing and my audience right now you've got this like black patchy wound gangrenous it is spreading at this point you need an amputation no longer can you be cured with just an injection and yet you won't let go of your stupid little hand when the scriptures make it clear that if anything causes you to sin gouge it out cut it off i've been telling these filthy men listen all these incessant incessant men that won't seize hostilities against my person who feel like i gotta die if i don't want to be with them <laughs> who are telling yourselves i'd like beyonce ring the alarm i've been through this too long and i'll be damned if i see another dude in your arms mm. My goodness, yeah, your little cancer has metastasized. It appears to be reaching vital organs. And at this stage, if at all you don't seek out chemotherapy, you're dead. You're dead. You're trying to kill me to live as Christ, but to die is gain. I can't really die. Even if this death that's going to sting me initially was just, you know, a flat line of coding. Bottom line is I come back up again. I'm Lazarus. I, I come forth. Oh, rich man. But you're going to find yourself in the flames of hell. Yeah. <laughs> like... You are trying to kill a woman that's not yours. I've made you insane. La la, yeah, you're insensitive. It's okay. We understand you're insensitive, but I'm trying to defibrillate you. I'm trying to stay you from jumping. You're on a ledge and you're about to like plunge into, et into the eternal lake of fire where the worm dieth not. And in that place, there is a uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth and the smoke of your torment will rise up forever, literally and forever. And like forever, like the proper, it's just, it's just, it doesn't stop. Yeah. Mm. And you think that that i can be negotiated with or god can be negotiated with or that your little vain philosophies doctrines of demons destructive heresies are going to free you from a god from whose hand i shall say i shall say this again no one can be delivered no one can be delivered from the hand of god and yet you think that insofar as you can manufacture doctrines of demons you're cool i am i'm being harassed accosted castigated just afflicted by sexual harassment at an astronomical level and i don't even understand why that's a thing but i guess i do it's my sorrow my soul my pain my abandonment how beleaguered i am on all sides and all the sorrow that i've endured for all these years now people feel like i'm a feasible option to hand to, 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 to just i don't know grab I feel like I'm Hortensia. Probably wondering who's Hortensia? Yeah. I was watching Jumanji the other day, some remake with Kevin Hart and some other dude, and there's this one woman who was arranged to marry the super villain in the movie, and her name was Hortensia. Yeah, I feel like I'm Hortensia at this point. I got some like rando out here on some insistence that I'm going to marry Garabos Isagela Hortensia Shawani, and I'm gonna make a Garabos Isagela Hortensia Shabalala. Oh, but I didn't say yes. Well, as Hortensia, God is going to set me free from the clutch of slavery at the hands of merciless, psychopathic, indecisive animals who are sitting outside of my ministry as the only five people watching me because you have blocked me on all sides and paid YouTube to do a strange thing. You will not cease hostilities against my person. Ultimately, you who are insisting on marrying Hortensia, get this. It's either me or you, okay? And if the Lord has seen it fit to result this in a martyrdom of my person, precious in his sight is my death. But comprehend that I will always be chosen above any wicked man or woman. So even in my death, it will be your demise. You have got a metastasizing cancer. The Bible says gouge out your eye, cut off your hands. I don't know how many times I have told these people to emigrate. Do you understand? Emigrate literally just bars like disperse from my ministry leave filthy men leave go back to your wives love them go back to your children raise them leave hortensia alone because nobody is going to arrange marry me by telling me rubbish like i'll give you a job i have one by telling me rubbish like i will give you a promotion i have one by telling me I have everything I need in Christ to live a life in godliness that's what I'm getting at and with whatever it is that I've been given whether it be bread or water or coffee I will be content I don't need more but you see it is those who seek after riches that then fall into many temptations I'm not seeking after riches and that's why you can't marry me as Hortensia I've said no hmm. listen up bullies okay that are out you harassing a woman that is disinterested entirely. Frankly, I'm flattered. I mean, I've been feeling kind of weird and unhappy ever since I turned 40. I feel like I'm not pretty anymore, you know? I'm unlovable, I'm unwantable. I am retractable and undigestible, vomitable. I've been feeling uneasy. So you're just confirming that I must be fly, super duper fly. Yeah, like a bird. But whether or not I feel fly or am fly, fly enough to still be wanted at 40, bottom line is, I'm not Hortensia, not to you. 
you are insisting upon a woman that you can never get and you are only doing that because you're looking around at the circumstance you with consciences that you are ignoring i am being looked at by my soul i did see la. filthy grubby licentious lascivious men into rituals from here to timbuktu and they think that the silencing of my ministry is the opportunity the louver of escape that they will have to finally cause a woman that's been fighting and flighting for 13 years to suddenly stop running fetishizing the prospect of impregnating her even when you've got a disease coursing through your veins that is transmissible through sexual contact like that's the kind of taboo bizarre stuff going on where i'm concerned and no amount of no achieves any fruit so i went from like blowing my top saying i hate you so much right now like Kelis, but now i'm coming back with but like what's the point carrying on like this oh aristotle that's just the thing you keep on manufacturing doctrines of demons and destructive heresies you are latching onto vain philosophies you have wandered into myths and these myths of yours have caused you to imagine that this here is obviously not going to achieve anything negative for you because it's been how long yeah that i've been suffering yeah and so because i've been suffering for as long as i've been suffering in my life it's just so sucky <laughs> yeah you imagine that I can be influenced by the negative reinforcement of perpetual curses on my person to finally do that which is a behavioral adjustment to turn away from God when I've been made a new creation and that cannot be reversed. It's it's just disgraceful, distasteful and alarming that it's happening at all. But nonetheless, it's happening. So let's discuss. I spoke about my lecturer at this university. I said I was going to speak about the normal distribution and I shall. He was a godly man. Praise the Lord for him, right? Mm. And he said once upon a time that the normal distribution is evidence of Jesus or God. He said God. He used the word God because, you know, these days when you use the name Jesus, so you might just get fired from a job. I need the bathroom. And I have returned. Anyway, let us continue to have a conversation about my experiences under my lecturer. I made mention of the fact that the Lord made us in his image. That's clear according to the scriptures that being made in his image and him being just therefore there is something in our hearts that seeks after justice that thing in our hearts that seeks after justice because we are made in the image of god is a conscience the conscience tells you when you have done a strange thing that stop also the conscience tells you when you are observing strange things that do something the conscience is what tells you to feel like trash when you are acting a strange fool that over there is not only the law of god written on your heart but it is also the recalibrating urge or yearn to be restored to a holy God. Do you understand? It is that which either makes you feel sad when you are ignoring something by omission, or it is that which makes you feel like trash because by commission you hurt something. You afflicted something. You acted wrong. It dwells in all of creation. We know that it, it dwells in human beings through our conscience. But in other creation, like animals and plant life, it is through the groaning of the planet, earthquakes, thunderstorms. Last night, I had a dream of rocks bleeding. It wasn't a dream, it was a vision. I was wide awake. I saw rocks under some kind of a bridge on the highway bleeding. And when I saw that, I was like, yes, like it, this world is evil. Rocks were just bleeding. Rocks were bleeding. That is the conscience or the recalibrated nature to God's righteousness of creation. Everything speaks volumes to the justice of God. Everything. And that's what my lecturer was trying to highlight when I was at university, that the normal distribution is evidence of God because it is just so just. It is just so miraculously just and its occurrence in so much across the human race is frankly nothing short of a miracle it evidences the existence of an intelligent creator instead of evolution or whatever you all need to understand you are in danger you are in trouble when you ignore your conscience you are in danger that's it's written in god's word matthew 25 praise the holy name of the one on high 